Hi folks, this is Sid from 3 Minute Travel Tips. Welcome to 3 Minute Travel Tips Live. 3 Minute Travel Tips Live is a roundtable discussion with travel professionals and industry bloggers. We're here to talk about vacation topics in a little more detail. During each 30 minute show, we will take a more in-depth look at a destination or topic than we normally do with our 3 minute format. Today's topic is different. We're going to a new destination. We're traveling across the country to California to offer some tips for first-time visitors to Disneyland Resort. And we've got the lowdown in 30 minutes or less. Joining us, well, first-time guest making her first appearance on 3-Minute Travel Tips. Her name is Myrna Litt. Myrna is based in Southern California and considered one of Magic of Mickey Travel's best experts when it comes to the Disneyland Resort. Additionally, I should mention she is a phenomenal photographer. Myrna, welcome to the show. Thank you and welcome for having me. Great. Next up, we have Tony Wargo. Tony is website and social media marketing manager for Magic of Mickey Travel. Tony, how are things up north? I say they're great. Thanks Thanks. for having me. Excellent. You know, as Disneyland this year will be celebrating its 60th anniversary in just a few months, so we decided to turn our attention to the one place that started it all. The opening of Disneyland was notable for many reasons. In it, Walt Disney and his team pioneered the idea of themed areas, audio animatronics, and even the first steel roller coaster. Walt envisioned it to be a destination that the whole family could enjoy. Myrna, you, uh, you, you are our seasoned expert here. Early on, what were some of the features that set the Disneyland Resort apart from other, say, traditional amusement parks? Well, Disneyland is great that Walt actually took it to a more of a theatrical where you have cast members and you're on stage and it was not rides, they're attractions. And also, he started the auto automatronics. I can't even say that correctly. Audio animatronics. You're right. You know, you're right. <laughs> and um, it started out with not only Mr. Lincoln and the Tiki Room, but that was something new that had never been seen before. And then um, the Steel Rail um, Matterhorn, which was pretty innovative at its time, the first one. So there's a lot of firsts at Disneyland, and they're just waiting for you to go experience them. Well, Tony, you, uh, you've got kind of a, a more recent experience as far as being a first-time visitor, but you are also very seasoned with Walt Disney World Resort. How would you say the transition of different, uh, I guess you could say, theme park technologies and experiences, um, can you describe a little bit about that and how certain things were developed at Disneyland that later uh, migrated over to other Disney theme parks? Sure. Uh, my first trip to Disneyland in California as an adult was April of 2013, so a little over two years ago. And there's a lot of similarities um, and concepts and ideas that have been borrowed from Disneyland that have carried over to other uh, Disney destination parks um, all over the globe. So while they are not exactly the same, there are um, similarities, but they all do use the, I'm going to try to say it, audio animatronics. (laughs) <laughs> well, that's true. They're using those kinds of technologies. Well, in talking about visiting the the, the Disneyland Resort, um, it is a different experience than, say, for those that are visiting Walt Disney World Resort. Um, Myrna, what would you advise uh, guests that are planning uh, their for their first time visit? What are some initial recommendations you'd think about before you actually made it to the parks? Well, it's always nice to check out the things that you want to do, the attractions and the hotels. And a lot of people think because it is a smaller park, they might not need as much time as they would with Walt uh, Disney World. But being that there is so much there and so much history, you really do need to plan out a full three days at the park. And if you're going, depending on the time of year, you want to make sure you either add a, a Sunday or a Friday so that you're able to see all the attractions and fireworks and shows that might not be available midweek during off-season. Interesting, interesting. Tony, um, if you were to advise guests, I mean, this is pretty recent for you as far as a first-time visitor. What would you suggest to them when they're planning their first visit? Um, I agree with what Myrna said. You want at least three days um, to visit both parks. Uh, I would, on the first day, in each park, 
kind of isolate the unique attractions and entertainment and other items that are unique and specific to Disneyland um, and California Adventure only. Um, things such as um, Toontown. They don't have that at Walt Disney World anymore. Uh, that's one thing. Um, uh, Mr. Toad's is no longer there. So those are just a couple um, just a couple examples of what you're going to find at Disneyland that you will not find at Walt Disney World anymore. Um, so definitely seek out what is unique first. And I don't want to say get those out of the way, but make sure you have plenty of time to enjoy those first uh, before going out in other more familiar um, territory. Tony brings up a good point, Myrna, and that, uh, and that is, you know, it's it's worthwhile to spend a little bit of time thinking about the attractions and the experiences that you would want to uh, share and see while you're visiting at Disneyland. Let's let's chat about let's let's dive a little deeper into into all things that make uh, Disneyland special. Myrna, what would you say are some of the signature um, attractions and experiences that a guest should uh, plan on seeing? Well, you might want to plan your day so that one day when you're at uh, Disney California Adventure, you have to see the world of color. They also have the Cars Land and the Radiator Springs that really is a must that you want to plan. And they also have some great shows at the Hyperion Theater, which is Aladdin. And it is like a Broadway show. It, you really have to see that. And a lot of people do miss out on seeing that show. And then at, Calif at the Disneyland, you have right now the Paint the Night and the Fireworks and um, Fantasmic that are great shows that you want to plan and you can do fast passes for many of those shows that do not interfere with your current fast passes for the attractions. That's true. Then fast pass situation you bring up an interesting point in that at Walt Disney World Resort um, uh, the technology that they're using there is is is, uh, is with magic bands but it, at Disneyland they're still using the the traditional uh, paper ticket system and I'll I'll yes. include a link uh, up, up here. I'll place it up here for folks to click and uh, on a three minute segment we did on Walt Disney World Resort and the traditional fast pass ticket system and most of the information there applies to uh, what guests might uh, need uh, to know as far as visiting uh, Disneyland Resort itself. Um, Tony, thinking about those must-do uh, experiences or attractions, uh, let's roll it out. Think about uh, in terms of Disney California Adventure what are, or for that matter Disneyland, what are some things that guests must see? Uh, Myrna definitely mentioned one, the um, World of Color. That's that's just phenomenal. Um, if you've ever seen the Fantasmic show in Hollywood Studios in Walt Disney World, Florida, this is a hundred times more magnificent. It's just so much bigger and on a larger scale. Where It's funny because everything else is smaller at Disneyland or more uh, condensed, I guess, but this is the larger in comparison. Um, definitely the Paradise Pier area, uh, Mad Tea Party, which isn't an attraction. It's an actual live concert. Um, that it, it's just incredible, um, especially if you like live music. It's a it's not just a band playing; it's a whole theatrical performance. Um, they're very talented musicians. Um, let's see what else is there. There's so much there. Um, the Matterhorn bobsleds. That's not something you can get at anywhere uh, at Disney World. Yeah, or anywhere, anywhere. Yeah, just there. Um, well, I think so even with the matter, go on and on. There's a lot. Um, there's a lot to do, but those are those are the major major ones that come to mind. I think even with the Matterhorn bobsleds, they just came out of a little bit of a refurb, and they've made a few ad additions about it. Uh, Myrna, I don't know if you know any of those details, but uh, it uh, you know it, 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 feel free to share as far as um, the, what what is the Matterhorn bobsled attraction like. Well, they just added the new Yeti that's in the Matterhorn with all the lights and the movement. And um, I personally have not been on that because I have a difficult time with that attraction. But my husband, that's a favorite, and friends of ours that go on it. Um, and just seeing the reaction last night of people on the Matterhorn, they absolutely love it. And one of the other new changes is they've added the Hatbox Ghost at the Haunted mm -hmm. Mansion. That's and right. that is phenomenal. I just was shocked at how great that looks. 
uh, as far as something like that. Uh, Tony, what would you say? I mean, some of these attractions, like the Matterhorn Bobsled, where they've they've updated, uh, they've done some updates. The Honda Mansion. Several of these. I mean, when you get into Cars Land and and what is over at Disney California Adventure, several of these areas are very popular. What are some strategies that uh, you can use as far as uh, trying to minimize the wait times in addition to, say, uh, getting and securing fast passes? Any, any suggestions for guests? Yeah, the, um, the earlier you can get to the parks, the better. Like You want to be able to, to go in. Um, that's a benefit of staying on the uh, property at one of the Disneyland Resort hotels um, is the, um, the access to the parks an hour mm-hmm. early before the other guests. Uh, you definitely want to do that. When I was there, my mm-hmm. first visit, I was able to take advantage of that, and I I got to ride um, Radiator Springs Racers two times before the park opened, and Toy Story Mania down at the Paradise Pier. After the park opened, I would have waited um, a lo- at least an hour in line to ride one time and fight through the crowds. Um, so that's just a couple examples of why getting there really early is a huge, huge benefit. Getting there early, and you, you also touch you also touch on the the uh, the, the Disneyland uh, Resort um, hotels, Myrna. Um, Disneyland and the hotels. We'll shift the gears a little bit. Let's talk about those hotels. Uh, with Walt Disney World Resort, you have many different hotels, many different category types, uh, catering to all kinds of experiences. But at Disneyland, it's a little bit different. How would you describe or characterize uh, the hotels that are offered there? Well, you have three different hotels, and the first one would be Paradise Pier that is really geared toward the children. The theming is all kind of beach California, and it just, the kids love that. They have rooms that are scaled down for the kids to see things, and it has a rooftop pool, and just, it's a fun hotel. It is the furthest away, and when I say furthest, it's not like Walt Disney World at all, and you can hop on to the... um, the monorail to go into the park and then the Disneyland Hotel which is a contemporary hotel and that is probably my favorite it does have a theming for uh, the three towers for each of the lands and um, it is really kind of old Disneyland there's a lot of um, touches where they've saved things from the original park that are, are displayed in there and of course, there's Trader Sam's, which is an <laughs> adult location, <laughs> and um, send the kids to the pool and go to Trader Sam's. And they also <laughs> have Hawaiian music in the evening, and we like to sometimes just go over and sit and listen to the Hawaiian music. And then, of course, the California um, Grand California Hotel and Spa is just phenomenal. It is taken after um, uh, the. Uh, American Craftsman style, and there's a lot of history, and if you can take the tour there, it is wonderful. They also have a lounge out back where they show movies sometimes in the summer at night out by the pool, and uh, it's just a beautiful hotel, and the advantage is it goes right into Disney California Adventure, so you have your own private access. Interesting, interesting. Tony, um, share some thoughts that you may have about uh, Disneyland and, and, and the hotel selections that they've got there. Yes, I um, have had the opportunity to be a guest at the um, Grand Californian and the Disneyland Hotel, but um, I also did get to look inside the Paradise Pier, and they are all, uh, there's nothing like them at, um, at Disney World. Uh, the closest maybe would be um, the Wilderness Lodge would be kind of close in style to the Grand Californian um, as far as uh, how open it is on the inside, but there's nothing that's close to them. Um, but yeah, like Murta said, when the Paradise Pier is the farthest away, it's really not that far. Um, <laughs> so, just with its walking distance. So in other words, you've, you've got a situation unlike at Walt Disney World Resort where you may have a series of buses or monorails or, or boats or you know whatever, a different form of transportation is needed to, to, to arrive at any of the theme parks. These are much closer in proximity and so it makes it makes uh, entering the park easier, I guess you could say, for guests, correct? Absolutely, yeah. You would actually be taking more time if you went out to a parking lot, caught a bus, and then drove it around to... And it, I don't even know how you could do it. <laughs> you, like, you have to pretty much go by foot if you're staying there. Um, 
unless you want to spend more time by not walking. Uh, well, let me shift gears a little bit and talk about another subject that is kind of dear and dear to my heart, and that's food. Um, at Walt Disney World Resort, you've got many different types of options. Literally, uh, I think I counted at one point somewhere between 200 and 300 different options when it comes to food and snacks at Walt Disney World Resort. Disneyland Resort's a little bit different, obviously maybe not quite on the same scale, but there are some really uh, neat things that uh, guests can experience. Myrna, uh, any initial suggestions or thoughts about food when at, in dining at Disneyland resort? Well, Disneyland does not have a food um, plan similar to what Walt Disney World has, but they still have the, um, the walk-up service, table service, and fine dining. And you can really, anything that your heart desires, you can go and experience. Um, I know one of my favorite is uh, Blue Bayou and the Carthay Circle. It's great if you can make reservations uh, 60 days in advance, but you don't always need to do that depending on the time of the year. You can sometimes call in the morning and get a same-day reservation. And there's a lot of, just like Walt Disney World, a lot of different theming in the park. And the hotels, because they're so close, you can experience some great restaurants inside the hotels. Interesting. I, I know with me, uh, I, I have to admit, the very first time I visited Disneyland, I, the, the, I, I discovered a treat that later did migrate to Walt Disney World Resort, and that was a churro. So there are different kinds of signature snacks and dishes and, well, just things that uh, folks can enjoy at Disneyland. Tony, any initial thoughts about food when, when, and dining at Disneyland? Yeah, it's, uh, it's got a lot of unique options. Um, they have the... It's called the corn dog cart, correct, Myrna? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you can get. A, they're supposedly world famous corn dogs. Um, and the day I met Myrna when I went to Disneyland two years ago, we were at the um, Carnation Cafe, which is right there on Main Street. Um, for those familiar with Walt Disney World, it's where the Emporium would be, uh, about midway down mid Main Street. It's around there, and they had a um, beverage called a peanut butter. Was it peanut butter and jelly soda? Yes. Um, yeah, she ordered one of those. I tried it. It was. Um, it was interesting. I'll say that, but um, they have they have things like that that I haven't seen anywhere before. But lots of little treats, um, churros. You can get Oreo churros in Downtown Disney now. So um, lots of just little unique items. And um, there's while there's not as many options as there are at Walt Disney World, there are still a lot of options to choose from to satisfy any palate. So and I know if you're if you're talking into say fine dining, there's fine dining experiences. There's a, a there's a private club uh, called Club Thirty Three. There's there, but at the same end, you've got uh, kind of the traditional um, oh uh, kind of a quick serve kind of experience, and, and you can have different snacks. You can have different. Uh, yeah, Myrna, I'm not sure if if I can describe the dish correctly, and maybe you can. Isn't there some kind of a dish involving corn chips and uh, uh, I don't know something over at Cars Land that's in a cup or a cone or oh, something? Oh, the cozy like? cones. They yes. Have what what is that? They have, they have three different booths, and one is soft serve ice cream, and then they have um, one that is chips and chili and cheese on top, and it's all inside a cone. And some of those do change periodically depending on the season, but the, you know, it's a meal in your hand that you can carry around with you. <laughs> and um, they also do pickled flavored ice, uh, pickled flavored, what is it? Uh, not ice cream, but um, there's something in a cone. I'm not a fan of pickles, so I don't recall exactly what it is. But um, it's kind of fun to check out, and it does change. And they have some awesome drinks over there also. And this is over in the Cars Land area, correct? In the Cars Land, um, right on the left side where you would see Mater is usually there for photographs and taking pictures. And it's just behind that. It's called the Cozy Cone Hotel. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really a fun place to go. <laughs> well, we, uh, we're doing well on time. I, I'm going to shift gears a little bit. With, when you visit Walt Disney World Resort, you, you have a, a, a wonderful transportation system with the Magical Express where, where guests literally uh, 
I mean, they're, it's it's kind of magical the experience as far as when they arrive at the airport and all of that. Disneyland is a little bit different. The transportation options are there. Tony, can you describe what the experience is like for a typical Disneyland guest as far as entering and getting uh, transportation to uh, the resort? To, are you asking me about to the resort from the airport? Say from the airport, or, or yes, what would be a typical uh, experience like for a guest? Sure. Um, it's pretty much just as streamlined as uh, the Magical Express is. Um, you can fly into LAX, um, or you can fly into the Orange County Airport. Uh, they're both just as convenient, so whichever is most cost-effective um, for, for the travelers. Um, they're going to have about similar commute times. It's actually... A little longer to, to travel from LAX, um, but maybe a lower cost. But as far as transportation from there to your resort, uh, it's pretty streamlined. They have a Disneyland Express, which is a bus. Um, there's also shuttles you can take. Um, you can set up in advance. And um, any of the dream makers at Magic of Mickey Travel will take care of all that for you. Um, we'll find the, the best option there is for you. But yeah, it's, um, it's pretty streamlined. They don't... Um, they don't check your bags into your room um, from when you do a baggage claim, like they do at MCO at Orlando International. There, the Magical Express picks up your bags, delivers them directly to your room. At Disneyland, you are responsible for picking up your bags. Um, that's really not that big of a deal to most people. Um, so it lacks but that it's... little luxury. But other than that, it's it's a pretty easy um, it, it's an easy easy thing to do. Myrna, as far as uh, if you were to make recommendations for guests uh, uh, in, in as far as transportation to Disneyland, whether they are coming in by air or they're driving in, um, do you have any suggestions for guests as far as transportation uh, in, in visiting there? Well, as far as uh, if you're coming from the airport, I usually check out to see which of the shuttles is running and the times that work best for them and um, we can prearrange those for the guests. As far as driving in, you know, it's a pretty pretty easy drive into Anaheim. And unlike Walt Disney World, we're in the middle of the city. So you do have your shuttles and your taxis and all of those mm -hmm. things that Walt Disney World is kind of out there all by itself, and we are right in the city. Mm. So it's it's the kind of thing that it's it's a little bit different experience in that uh, with Walt Disney World Resort you're you're talking about a, a really large area with a lot of wilderness. In in the case of Disneyland and the footprint, it's it's within a it's within really a major city, if you will, or a city atmosphere. And so again, transportation options going to be a little bit different there. Would you, Tony, suggest? Uh, if there should guests rent a car, would it be better just to go ahead and take the 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 the, sur the shuttle service that's offered? I mean, it's any reason to go one way or the other? I would definitely not rent a car. Um, me being from um, from Virginia, where there's not a lot of city traffic, and I'm used to knowing where I'm going. I I've seen how people drive out there. Um, I wouldn't want to drive in that stuff. Um, <laughs> at all, so I wouldn't even would not recommend renting a car unless you absolutely just want to create that extra stress for yourself. Um, I, I've seen the traffic. I've seen how people are driving around the airport, and um, it do not drive. <laughs> That's my recommendation. <laughs> Don't rent a car because uh, it doesn't make any any uh, fiscal sense. It's going to cost you a lot less to get a shuttle to have someone. Mm -hmm who knows where they're going, take you exactly where you need to go. Um, there's just a lot of risk involved well, in, in driving yourself unless you really want to do that to yourself. Well, unless there's other reasons they're looking to, to visit other parts in Southern California or something like that. It, if they're looking for a Disneyland uh, resort experience only, uh, renting a car really isn't needed is yeah. probably about the best way exactly, to Exactly, because you're going to pay for parking then as well. Well, I hate to say it, but we're to a point where we need to uh, wrap it up. I uh, I uh, firmly believe that this topic, as far as Disneyland, we're going to do some uh, additional deep dives in it uh, later because there's a lot to talk about as far as Disneyland Resort. But uh, before we wrap up the program, we always end on our tip of the day, and I'd first like to turn it over to Myrna. Myrna, what would be your tip of the day? 
Well, my biggest tip is if you're on vacation, you want to relax, you want to have a good time, you want to sleep in, but don't do it. You want to get up first thing in the morning, get those fast passes for the park, enjoy your magical morning with your extra hour, and then rest in the afternoon, but make sure you're back in the park to see the fireworks and the paint the night parade. It is just phenomenal. I saw them all last night, and it's great. Excellent. Tony, what is your tip of the day? Well, I'm, I'm going to change it up this time, Sid, and offer a challenge of the day. If you're used to going to Walt Disney World in Florida, uh, I challenge you to make your next Disney vacation to Disneyland, California. Uh, coming from Virginia to Florida and then going from Virginia to California, the cost is about the same um, when you're spending less days at Disneyland. Um, so definitely make Disneyland uh, California your next Disney destination vacation. Excellent, excellent. Well, my tip of the day is concerning, we're going to shift gears with that even, and we're going to talk about Disney Cruise Line. Specifically, Disney Cruise Line has some dates in the near future where they're going to be uh, uh, departing out of New York City. Uh, that's a unique uh, location for them to be sailing out of. And as I understand it, they're offering some dates that include visits down to Castaway Key and Walt Disney World Resort and possibly some other locations as well. But uh, I would suggest you contact your travel professional to find out all the details, all the dates, the pricing and everything. It's a great experience. And it certainly is going to be unique if you're going to be sailing out of well, sailing out of New York City and going down the East Coast. Well, it is time to wrap it up. Uh, I'd like to thank you for tuning in on the broadcast. I'd also like to thank Myrna uh, for joining us. Myrna, what's the best way folks can reach out and contact you? The easiest way is at Myrna at magicamickey.com. You can email me and I also have a travel Facebook page so you can check that out also. Excellent. Tony, uh, I'd like to thank you as well and what's the best way thank folks you, can reach out to you? Uh, they can reach me by email at Tony at MagicOfMickey.com, and I also have a Facebook page for um, Magic of Mickey Travel, Tony Warga. Excellent. Well, that's it. In 30 minutes or less, for all your Disney travel needs, reach out to any of the dream makers at Magic of Mickey Travel. And for more travel tips, please subscribe below or check us out on Facebook, Twitter, or Pinterest. And you can also reach us on our blog website, 3MinuteTravelTips.com. Thanks for watching.